y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. I have a story from the Times of Israel, and it is going to blow your mind if you are a African American, Negro, so called Black person, whatever you want to call us here in the States that um, are descendants of slaves, uh, foundational Black Americans, African American descendants of slaves. But most importantly, those of us who understand through this awakening who we are, the true children of Israel, the true chosen people, the Hebrews, the true Jews of the book, Jewish people. We're not Jewish, we're Jews. This story is going to be about usury. And we don't talk about this enough. We talk about how America has done us dirty for the entire duration of the time we've been here in captivity. But we don't really talk about usury, how all the different ways that they charge us taxes and interest, and we pay higher interest for pretty much everything that we get, even if we have good credit, we still pay high interest rates. And the fact that Everything is is switched around, like the people who shouldn't be getting the deals or getting the breaks or getting the religious, um, I hate to use the term religious, but the um, who, who um, practice the ways, the law, statutes, and commandments, the way that we should. They've taught us wrong and they practice amongst themselves what they should do. Um, you know, how they should live when it comes to uh, cheating one another out of stuff. Like, it's okay to cheat other people, charge other people interest rates, but a uh, high interest rate, so, or just interest in general. You let somebody borrow something, you're not supposed to, we're not supposed to charge interest. We're supposed to um, return whatever we owe when when we can or when we promise to. And without interest, that's just the Hebrew culture is in the Torah or the Bible. We don't practice that. They don't talk about it. They don't teach us that. Banks don't practice that. America doesn't practice that. So when they talk about their Christian nation, and this is how you have to know that Christianity and the law, statutes, and commandments of the book are not not the same. They took some practices from the book, but not all of them. And when it comes to charging interest, that is one of those things that um, whether you're a Christian or, you know, foundational Black American and understanding who we are, we've been cheated a long time. We don't get the privileges that um, the Khazars do um, and the Ashkenaz say that we don't we don't we're not allowed to do business with them or outside of them the way that they are they have everything set up so that they're us and we're them like the roles have been switched so I'm gonna um give you the definition of what usury is. Let me see. Hopefully I still have it. Here it is. It's pulled up. Before I get into the story, because I want you to understand where it came from. So usury is the practice of lending money and charging the borrower interest, especially at an exorbitant or illegally high rate. That has been done to us with home loans, personal loans, car loans, anything they can lend us, they charge us extra high prices. Um, Even with taxes, you look at, you know, um, different communities and how how we pay higher uh, prices for our food, for our gas, for car insurance, everything. It was, it's always a usury or exorbitant high rate a fee or a tax associated with us. And now that we understand who we are, we know why. So the other definitions are an excessive or illegally high rate of interest charged on borrowed money, 
interest paid, interest charged on a loan, the practice of lending money <clears throat> at such high rates, and the practice of lending money at interest. So I'm going to also pull up this thing on Wikipedia because it tells you where the practice comes from. And so it's going to provide some context for this story. But I want you to keep in mind that I'm talking about America. I'm talking specifically about African-Americans. I'm not talking about no other people except for African-American Black people um, because we have been victims of usury since we've been allowed to participate in their economy. So usury is the practice of making unethical or immoral loans that unfairly enrich the lender. The term may be used in a moral sense, condemning taking advantage of others, others' misfortune, or in a legal sense, where an interest rate is charged in excess of the maximum rate that is allowed by law. A loan may be considered usurious because of excessive or abusive interest rates or other factors defined by the laws of a state. Someone who practices usury can be called a usurer, but in modern colloquial English may be called a loan shark. That would be America. So listen to this now. In many historical societies, including ancient Christian, Jewish, and Islamic societies, usury meant the charging of interest of any kind and was considered wrong or was made illegal. Notice nobody ever made usury illegal against us, yet everybody in the world knows that they cheat us. During the Sultra period in India, 7th, to second centuries BC, there were laws prohibiting the highest caste from practicing usury. Similar condemnations are found in religious texts from Buddhism, Judaism, or Ribbit in Hebrew, Christianity, and in Islam. At times, Many, but nobody will tell you like this usury actually came from Hebrew. So you got to watch how they write this stuff because all these practices basically came from um, from the Torah. And instead of them saying that, they'll try to throw in all these other religions, knowing that all of them come from the Roman Catholic Church. Or from Rome, and all of them just basically picked apart the Torah and took what they wanted from it and then lied about the rest. So it says, um, at times, many states from the ancient Greece to ancient from ancient Greece to ancient Rome have outlawed loans with any interest through though this though though the Roman Empire eventually allowed loans with carefully restricted interest rates, the Catholic Church in medieval Europe, as well as the Reformed churches, regarded the charging of interest at any rate as sinful. Religious prohibitions on usury are predicated upon the belief that charging interest on a loan is a sin. But since then, they have come back around and decided that it's okay, especially in Babylon. So listen, usury in the original sense of any interest was denounced by religious leaders and philosophers in the ancient world, including, notice they say first, Moses. That's where it came from. It came from the Torah or the Bible. Uh, for those who can't fathom not mentioned in the Bible. So that's why I say Bible. Certain negative historical renditions of usury carry with them social connotations of perceived, unjust, or discriminatory lending practices. The historian Paul Johnson comments, most early religious systems in the ancient Near East 
and the secular codes arising from them did not forbid usury. These societies regarded inanimate matter as alive, like plants, animals, and people, and capable of reproducing itself. Hence, if you lent food or monetary tokens of any kind, it was a legitimate it was legitimate to charge interest. Food money in the shape of olives, dates, seeds, and animals was lent out as early as 5000 BC, if not earlier. Among the Mesopotamians, Mesopotamians, Hittites, Phoenicians, and Egyptians, if y'all understand who these people are, you know why it's problematic interest and their descendants of the people that got us in captivity today interest was legal and often fixed by the state but the hebrew took a different view of the matter theological historian john noonan argues that the doctrine of usury was enunciated by popes expressed by three ecumenical councils proclaimed by bishops and taught unanimously by theologians. So anyway, I'm gonna put a link to this usury so you can kind of understand um, where it came from. But basically, you will see that it, it will confirm that America is basically a mini Roman Empire. It's just a, a um, revamping of the Roman Empire because you'll see where that um, empire basically didn't have an issue with usury and today um you know it's the same thing rich rich people um take from the poor and uh, i'll share this last uh, section with you before i go into the story so um I, i just wanted to provide some context about usury and about us because we are you know the descendants of hebrews and we're not supposed to be victims of usury. We're not supposed to be working and enslaved and spending the majority of our money paying for um, interest. And I'll just give you an example. Like, you know, you, you pay the principal for your house, you know, for years before you even start paying on the house. That's money that we should never be, have had to pay. Other groups don't have to pay that. One particular group, you're going to learn in this story that I'm going to bring you. They don't. They have special rules for them. They have special loans for them. They have special practices for them that we never knew anything about. And we don't get to benefit from them because we don't have the label of the J people that you can't talk about. So it says, Monday, um, during the uh, Roman Empire, banking during the Roman Empire was different from modern banking. During the Principate period, most banking activities were conducted by private individuals who, are, who operated as large banking firms do today. Anybody that had, had any available liquid assets and wished to lend it out could do so easily. Um, so it says, the annual rates of interest on loans varied in the range of 4 through 12 percent but when the interest rate was higher it was typically typically uh, n- was not 15 through 16 percent but either 24 or 48 percent and you'll see a lot of loans today those um exorbitant uh high interest rates especially for people who don't have good credit they tend to be like 24 to 27%, but sometimes it's more than that. Um, and some of these interest rates now, they change the names to fees. They like to put fees on stuff. So it says they quoted them on a monthly basis, and the most common rates were multiples of 12. Monthly rates tend to range from simple fractions up to 3 to 4% perhaps because lenders used Roman numerals. Money lending during this period was largely a matter of private loans advanced to persons persistently in debt or temporarily so until harvest time. Mostly it was undertaken by exceedingly rich men prepared to take on a high risk if the profit looked good. Interest rates were fixed privately 
and were almost entirely unrestricted by law. Investment was always regarded as a matter of seeking personal profit, often on a large scale. And that's what we see today from title loans to payday loans, um, the personal loans that you get from the, the lending companies. Um, if, if you're not rich and you don't have good, 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 good credit, even sometimes if you have good credit, if you're black, you're always going to be a victim of usury, always in, in Babylon. We're not even supposed to have systems like this, really. Um, this whole economic system that we have is just totally unethical and unbiblical. It's not the way that the law, statutes, and commandments will have us live and do business or work because we are basically working to pay debt. You're constantly, you're enslaved. You live in a renter society. You don't own anything. No matter what anybody tells you, you never outright own anything in this society. Banking was of the small backstreet variety run by the urban lower middle class of petty shopkeepers. By the third century, Acute currency problems in the empire drove such banking into decline, and that's kind of what you see now. The rich who were in a position to take advantage of the situation became the money lenders when the increasing tax demands in the last declining days of the empire crippled and eventually destroyed the peasant class by reducing tenant farmers to serfs. That is what in the hell is happening in America right now. It was evident that usury meant exploitation of the poor. Black people, African-American people, I don't care if you're a boule class, you live in your little nice house, and you drive your little Mercedes Benz, you got some jewelry and some red bottom shoes. You are a victim of usury. You're a victim of usury. Cicero, in the second book of his treatise, De Officis, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. Relates the following conversation between an unnamed questioner and Cato. So it says, of whom, when inquiry was made, what was the best policy in the management of one's property? He answered, good grazing. What was next? <clears throat> Tolerable grazing. What third? Bad grazing. What fourth? tilling and when he who had interrogated him inquired what do you think of the lend of lending at usury then cato answered what do you think of murder end quote so i'm not going to go into this where to talk about religion and judaism because this would be a whole other other we got to fight about all this, who the people are and what's this now. I'm not getting into that, but I'm going to put this in the description because if you are awakened and you read this, you'll be able to figure out what in the heck is going on, what's wrong, what's right, what was flipped upside down and how that impacts African-American Black people, foundational Black Americans, uh, African-American descendants of slaves, whatever you want to call us. Uh, descendants of chattel slavery, freedmen. This applies to us because we them people and we've never been able to escape usury. And as this society declines, now everybody is going to be a victim of usury. We've all been victims, but because nobody cared about us, everybody ends up having to pay in the end. And it's like that time and time again, it doesn't matter what it is you look back at things that they've done to us wrongs they've committed and then the next thing you know it's it's impacting everybody it's knocking on everybody's door so i'm gonna go to this story I, hopefully i set the stage about usury because now you're going to see what i'm talking about so it says jewish owned quicken loans now kosher which means it's cool for orthodox borrowers 
U.S. lender adopts halalic technicality so it can use, so I'm sorry, so it can issue lines of credit to those concerned about usury. So halalic basically means halal where it's, it's um, rules specifically for Jewish people that were taken from the Torah and it was a rule or a um, belief and a practice that came from the Hebrews, came from Moses. It wasn't meant for them. It was meant for us. So um, y'all should study usury if you're awakening and you know who we are. So check this story out. So it says Orthodox Jews can continue to take out mortgages and other loans from Quicken Loans after the company resolved a Jewish legal problem. So they have their own legal stuff that we are supposed to be able to benefit from because we are them people. And those things that they have that are legal are really meant for us. But because they stole our identity and they stole our book and converted, they get to benefit from all the things that we should benefit from or the rules that should apply to our community if we were wealthy and weren't stripped of who we are and stripped of resources. This is how we would do business with one another. A good, a good of Israel of America, a major ultra orthodox organization, issued a Jewish legal ruling in April. Who that? Who? Well, I was about to cuss. What in the world? Okay, so this this organization basically prohibited Jews from taking out loans from the Detroit-based company because it was majority owned by Jews, notably Dan Gilbert, Gilbert who also owns the NBA, um, NBA's Cleveland Cavaliers. So Quicken Loans, which claims to be America's largest mortgage lender, also owns Rocket Mortgage, the online mortgage agency. Jewish law or halakha forbids Jews from charging interest to other Jews. So Jews are allowed to own mortgage agencies and lend to non-Jewish customers, but they are not allowed to lend to fellow Jews. And I guess they couldn't lend to fellow Jews because of the usury. Because if you charge, if you lend to everybody else, and we're under they're operating under this Roman Empire um, law that allows them to charge interest. Well, they do that. They just can't do it to each other if you are Jew or Jewish, I'll say Jewish. The hey, wait a minute. What's happening? Okay, so it says the big biblical commandment against charging interest is known as ribbit de oratia but i don't know what that is we're just gonna say usury because i don't know enough about that particular word so it says as of friday quicken loans adopted what is known as heter iska a technicality that changes the loan into a co-investment in which the lender and borrow, borrower become business partners. One supplies the capital, capital and the other uses it as they see fit. We would never be able to get nothing like that. Now, here we are, the true people of the book, and we don't practice this with each other. They don't practice it. This country is financial institutions, financial systems, economic systems. They don't practice this with us, state local governments they don't practice this with us everybody handles us rough and this is why you can guarantee this country is going to be judged so you know when i say come out of her this is why you know i try to tell people to try to get out of debt and not deal with these folks because they don't see us as they see themselves they see us as Walking paychecks, we're just dollar signs. Every child you have, 
every day you live, we are all just walking paychecks, money for them. The Aguda issued a statement notifying the community that Quicken Loans had adopted a global header ISCA covering all mortgages initiated after June 8th. The header ISCA does not retroactively reclassify existing loans. However, according to the Aguda, according to Aguda spokesman Rabbi Avi Shafran, Quicken Loans' practice is to sell all loans shortly after they are made, and thus they do not need any further corrective action. On behalf of Torah Jewelry across America, we thank Quicken Loans for its sensitivity and devotion to the needs of the community, the Aguda statement said. The company has exhibited true leadership in taking this bold move quickly and efficiently, trailblazing a clear path forward for the observant Jewish community. We are grateful for this and we express our deepest appreciation. So one thing I want to say is, do you see how all these other groups get together and make sure their people are not taken advantage of? Meanwhile, we got so many raccoons among us, tearing us down, selling us out, shucking and jiving, getting butter biscuits that we can't even get out. We, you know, we can't even form nothing. It's just like always organized chaos. And nobody really cares about the people. The people who care, like me, I'm never going to get a, 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 a voice or a platform to speak out because either I'll be silenced or I'll have my own people coming against me. And I can tell you, they do that. They've done it to me. I've heard numerous other um, people in, during this awakening talk about how our people will turn on us. Like there's something fundamentally broken. Our, our brains are broken in our community, but you can see everybody else coming together. Everybody else is like, oh yeah, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to fight this thing and, and make sure our people aren't taken advantage of. Not black people. We will just be sitting around saying, oh, that ain't right. They shouldn't do that to us but we don't have anything to come back and base anything on. We should use this usury rule. We should have attorneys fighting for us. If they people know who we are, they should be fighting for us to have all our money returned. This is why we need recompense. This is why we need reparations. This is why we need repair. Because as the true children of the, of the chosen people, the children of the book, children of Israel, we we have never been able to practice our culture because it was taken from us. Everybody else practices what we're supposed to practice. Everybody else lives the way that we're supposed to live. Everybody else does what we're supposed to do. And we are the people and we don't do none of the stuff that we're supposed to do. We adopt all the bad stuff they tell us to do, all the wrong ways that, that they tell, you know, the ways that they teach us how to live. And then we, we become okay with it. And then we wonder why we're poor, why we always working and we can't save money, why we don't never have nothing. We don't question why stuff is so high. We don't even try to do a comparison to see if our um, debt is lower than other folks' debt and their, if their interest rates are lower or higher than ours. We don't do nothing. We just accept everything and it's crazy. So anyway, that's the end of this story. Shout out to Only Pamela's Way um, for sharing this story with me because I would have never known anything about it. Um, I was aware of usury and what it is, but I had no idea that these people have legal avenues to take and to force corporations, banks, lenders to not charge them interest and give them lines of credit and and have relationships with them where they are partners and it's not you know lender borrower type of relationships this is the type of stuff that we need to know because this this helps us confirm that they don't treat us right they don't treat us well they know who we are and yet 
they get to benefit from things that we don't get to benefit from. So, you know, it's it's really unfortunate that we are learning all this stuff now towards the end. But it's better to know now than to never know, I guess. Um, let us just understand we are in the land of our captivity and they are going to make us serfs. That's the goal. So if you stay here, if you're trying to stay here, this is this is what life is going to be like for us unless you're able to prove you are a hebrew or descendants of a descendant of hebrews um and they're gonna make sure you're not able to do that so the best thing to do is not be in debt try not to borrow nothing from these folks i don't care if you need a new car buy your old beat up car and fix it up Stop taking out loans with these people because they have different strokes for different folks. And our role is always going to be the hardest to hold. We're always going to pay more. We're always going to be cheated. We're always going to be exploited. And it's legal. That's the other thing. All of it is legal. So don't play their game anymore. Keep your money in your pocket. Learn how to do without learn how to change your life style because you're always going to lose even if you think you're winning you're losing the more that you have to pay for stuff and take out these loans with these people the more we we're exploited as a community and it just makes our community poorer all right so i'm going to end this video now please like it share it subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification and hit all so that you'll be notified each and every time I upload new content. Please make sure you are still subscribed to the channel because YouTube has been unsubscribing people on this channel. Follow me on Odyssey and Rumble. The links are in the description. Description. Also on Instagram and on Facebook, links for those are also in the description. Um, in the event that I'm booted from this platform, there will be other places that you'll be able to reach out to me. Um, and those are the places that I will be. I will upload content to Rumble in the event that this channel is taken down unless they stop me. If you'd like to support the channel, you like this type of content, please consider supporting the channel. Um, my Venmo and my coffee links are below in the description, all the way at the bottom, because this is a labor of love. We're not compensated for doing this. This is just a risk we take. And so um, anything that you could share is greatly appreciated. Lastly, keep prepping, keep praying, keep seeking the most high so that we can get out of here. We need an exodus like yesterday because the longer we stay here, the more we stay here, the more we're going to be exploited. So in order for us, to get away from this we need to get out of here as you can see we're at the last phase where everybody's going to be a surf and if you can't see it now i don't really know what to say anywho study about usury and then study how these fake folks done use that to their advantage to build up their communities to make sure their collective is strengthened while basically ignoring us and exploiting us we've always kept this economy going we're still keeping this economy going whether it be for mortgages car loans um student loans it doesn't matter. Everything we engage in, pretty much usury is practiced. And it's illegal because we're the people of the book. We're Jews. So we should be able to benefit from these same laws. But nobody will ever tell us that because if they tell us that, then their whole, their whole playhouse will come crumbling down. So I'm here to share with you this is what we're supposed to be uh, practicing and we need to speak up 
and act like we know who we are and practice doing business with each other and with this world the way that we should. If it's Jewish owned, they're converts. We're um, bloodline descendants. So you should be able to benefit the same um, way. And you should say that. I don't recommend doing nothing in this system since it's failing. But hey, if you feel like it, quote the same stuff from this article and go for what you know. That's all I got to say. All right, this is Marley Kay, and I'm out.